This is the generic announcer, and December the 25th is here, so no big elaborate bumps or anything, just a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays from Multimedia J Radio Style. Jammy Jams again, YouTube Audio Library again, this time joy to the world, and again we will go from the instrumental to the full version with vocals that sounds again like an old Louis Armstrong Ella Fitzgerald song at the end of this segment of the podcast here on December the 25th, this year December the 25th, right here on Multimedia J Radio Style. Merry Christmas! Blessed Christmas Tide! Happy Feast of the Incarnation! Happy Feast of the Nativity! Happy Humbug Day! How many names does this day actually have? So, <laughs> oh boy, has this been interesting so far. We're picking up where we left off on the discussion about the dual holiday known as Christmas. Now, of course, it actually is the 25th and not Christmas Eve. Hence the change in the tunes from Silent Night to Joy to the World. And we have more to talk about. Usual moron rules apply here. Moron sounds like moron. So the question is, who are the morons or where are the morons as we discuss? Well, I think there's a couple of very valid guesses that one could make as to who the morons are in this discussion. One of them is me. Because I did not give Santa Claus a fair shake, so to speak, with my discussion of the dual holiday yesterday on Christmas Eve. So if I can get this microphone right, I would like to actually try and, you know, level things out a bit. Because, well, yeah, I'm pretty disgusted with how people have taken the whole holiday thing and perverted it into something regular, very, very selfish. Uh, routinely a very selfish observance with family members driving each other nuts and driving themselves into bleeding lots of red ink at the beginning of the new year because you had better get me everything I want for Christmas or else. You know, I do believe there's plenty of behavior out there that would warrant a lump of coal under the usual Santa rules. So I need to give Santa a fair shake here. And yeah, there is another side to the Santa Christmas, and we will get to that. But for now, let's just say that I probably decided to do something outlandish today with what I'm seeing locally in this area what do you know, I actually wanted to go to some kind of church service on Christmas Day, even though it's a Sunday Christmas. But apparently, Christians going to church on Christmas is a tall order around here, because it's crazy just how much churches cave on Chris when it comes to Christmas services, and especially Sunday Christmas services. Now... Having seen a lot of different traditions out there and a lot of different approaches and a lot of different attitudes, philosophies, theologies, the whole nine yards, it's crazy how, you know, with some of the preaching that I've heard about, celebrate Christmas the right way, keep Christ in Christmas, go on, man, do the right thing. It's crazy, you know, how there can be all this hot-headed stuff, and then the 25th rolls around and some of this other stuff happens. Like, for example, any church that canceled service today, so folks could be at home with their families, which fortunately I don't know of any around here. So thank goodness, maybe that practice is falling out of favor or maybe, you know, folks were kind of like, you know what? It's Sunday anyway. So, um, <laughs> well, so what if Christmas was at some other time <laughs> during the year? And then there's the runner up to that practice, and that is bumping the service back to earlier than it usually is. Even if you have a big sign outside your building that says otherwise, there was some of that going on. So first of all, the Lutherans that I wanted to touch base with, they normally have a service at 1045. Oh no, Christians going to church on Christmas sometime other than early morning. What? <laughs> 
Oh, man. Yeah. So they normally have service at 1045. They caved, bumped it back to 10 o'clock. Here's the problem. Last night, we had a bit of black ice. Uh, yeah, is what we there? There were first responders. I heard sirens the whole nine yards last night. Things froze up pretty quickly after the rain stopped. Temperature absolutely plummeted, and anything that was wet became at least part ice. But uh, for some strange reason, despite ice crap being winter enemy numero uno here in southern New England, there seems to be a lot of people around here that can't grasp that simple concept that something that gets rained on during the day in the winter time may ice up if the temperature drops too quickly which is what happened yesterday black ice all over the pit all over the place people are slamming into things as early as seven o'clock in the evening not because of drunk drivers but because not because they were drunk drivers but because simply black ice everywhere the dpw and the sand trucks and the salt trucks hadn't yet put in their santa shift as of that time Eventually, they did, but, you know, sometimes that can be a form of false assurance, so to speak, with sand and salt, and you think you're all set, but salt can always uh, refreeze and things like that, and they maybe, maybe they missed a spot with the sand and stuff like that. So anyways, point being, it got really icy last night, and that ice was still around this morning on the day when all these churches that caved bumped their services back to early in the morning. I would have liked to have touched base with these Lutherans I've been meaning to get in touch with that normally have service at 1045 and i would have if they had their service at 1045 but they caved bumped it back to 10 o'clock it's a little bit of a drive so around the time i would have been leaving then uh yeah it's uh, <laughs> still too much ice still anything that was wet from last night that hadn't yet gotten any sunlight was still ice so that pretty much ruined that so then i was like you know what Last year, I went and visited the local Catholic parish because I would understand their liturgy the best, and uh, it didn't work out too well. I mean, the priest was talking some weird, touchy-feely stuff about, feel God this holiday season. No, no mention of Jesus, no mention of the baby in the manger, no mention of the incarnation, despite it being called that in the uh, in the in the bulletin. Uh, no, just like, ooh, touchy-feely, feel God in your goodness this holiday season, or something like that. Yeah, that, that kind of stuck with me as you can imagine i'm remembering a, a, a bad sermon a year later but you know, here's the thing i understand people that aren't into religion and stuff like that aren't going to be going around talking about the nativity they're not going to be going around talking about the baby jesus they're going to tell me more about santa claus and charity and doing good deeds for others and what they're buying their kids for christmas and things along those lines but of all the people that i expect not to be talking to me about a baby in a manger on christmas morning you would think the last person in the world to not do that wouldn't be a priest. <laughs> what? So just for fun, although I'm sure I'm glad I guessed correctly on this. They have a big sign outside their door, outside their church. Mass at nine. So I head up there at 845. Everybody's getting out instead of going in. They caved. They had one morning mass at eight o'clock. So, uh, okay, that didn't work out. Fortunately, my last lucky guess was also right. There's also a friendly group of Baptists in the area, and I figured they normally have 11 o'clock services. I'll bet any money they didn't cave on either having a service, not having a service, or bumping it back. I'll bet any money they're all still getting together at 11 o'clock because it's Christmas. You know what? And guess what? I was right. No, yeah, my background may be more Lutheran, but uh, if I'm going to visit a place, these folks are it. No questions asked. They're a very tight-knit, friendly bunch of folks who give a darn about each other. They're not doing fast food McChurch. Get it over with so they can check it off their God list for the day. They actually talk to each other. They actually pray for each other. They actually give testimonies of what's been going good in their lives and things like that. You know, they're actually, you know, a community of sorts, a faith community, as some of the folks trying to classify these groups would be. And, you know, it's if I wasn't already so into the Reformation like I am, I probably would be there every Sunday. So it's only a few technicalities there. But, hey, if there's a place I'm going to visit, it's going to be them. Because here we are, Sunday Christmas. And, you know, what? You're all going to go to church for 11 o'clock in the morning on Christmas? What? Oh, man. But they did. And not only that, they also preached about the baby in the manger. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, they actually preached Christmassy stuff on Christmas morning. What a concept. 
I don't know why that is such a tall order these days, but you know, I'd like to say if you're going to believe in something, don't half-ass it. Show some actual conviction. These folks did. Ergo, despite our differences with denominational stuff, I was there because they didn't cave. Two thumbs up to them. They may be a friendly bunch of neighborhood folks in a historical looking church that makes you think that the ghost of Roger Williams is suddenly going to pop up at some point, but they didn't cave when it came to Christmas. And I'm very glad that I guessed correctly about visiting them today when I hadn't visited them in quite some time. That being settled, I think it's about time I mended things, so to speak, regarding the Santa Christmas. Because last night, as the black ice froze up and everything, I was having a nice little Christmas Netflix marathon. And I might do more of that this afternoon after I get done with the upcoming classics for Christmas that, that's going up on Daily Motion, as well as this podcast. But, however, last night I watched a few Santa movies, like The Santa Claus and Miracle on 34th Street, stuff that's floating around on Netflix. A lot of it's one. And I also watched the, uh, the, the uh, Bill Murray Scrooge parody, Scrooged. Basically, it's a, uh, it's a parody of the Scrooge story about a TV executive in the 80s, and there's a lot of 80s stuff in there and whatnot. You can tell it's from the 80s if you, if you watch it, but it's on Netflix. But uh, it was pretty funny. But I still wanted to watch some real Scrooge movies after that, because that was almost like a spoof of sorts. But as I was watching these uh, these Santa movies and Scrooge movies last night, it occurred to me that I didn't really give Santa a fair shake when it came to the Santa Christmas and the more secular Christmas, because I'm so ex- I've been so exposed to how much it's been perverted into all this uh, into all this manipulating others and getting what you want. And did you get me everything I wanted for Christmas? I imagine some Santa apologists would be like, hey, you know, what about the whole lump of coal thing? What if, you know, the, what about the... <laughs> you know, Santa is inherently anti-greedy. You know, they, and I do remember when I was a little kid, folks telling me all that Santa stuff, they were always like, don't ask Santa for too much for Christmas or you're not going to get it because Santa doesn't like greedy children. And uh, again, that's manipulation again. <laughs> This sort of stuff. um, But anyways, yeah, the whole thing with Santa and whatnot. It's important to remember the historical roots of our modern Santa Claus was in the 1800s, when, as we mentioned last time, there was a bit of a fight going on about whether to observe Christmas because folks thought that it was a little too Catholic in more Protestant parts of the country. Matter of fact, New England actually had a ban on Christmas celebrations. Oh, that's the Pope's mumbo jumbo. We're better than that. Be, 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 be. So while, while there was all this bickering about whether or not to even observe Christmas in the first place, you had folks like Charles Dickens and other folks trying to rebrand Christmas as kind of more of a goody two shoe charity, peace on earth, goodwill toward men type holiday. And of course, by men, we mean people, blah, blah, blah. Be benevolent, be charitable, you know, get your get get your loved ones something, get your loved ones a gift, things like that. And it actually, when I was watching those Santa movies last night, Santa was portrayed in the benevolent Father Christmas type thing and uh, things along those lines. We kind of got away from, he sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, behave yourself, kids, your Santa's not going to get you anything and stuff like that. But it was great to see a Father Christmas figure in these movies actually benevolent and uh, towards those less fortunate and whatnot. That's more in line with the original St. Nicholas and tossing sacks of gold coins through poor people's windows and things like that. There also was the thing where he punched Arius, but that's that can be relegated to theological seasonal comedy. And that's something else entirely. But in terms of the benevolence and the charity, yeah, definitely. That's part of what brought Christmas into its current state today is trying to rebrand it as get it away from all the religious sides of it. Just being all goody two shoe end of the year, be benevolent, buy your loved ones a gift or two, things along those lines. And yeah, you know, it's great to see that. But even that has been twisted by what we see today. (laughs) It's stuff along those lines, you know. Even simple benevolence and stuff like that. And there's even people that are second-guessing folks being charitable around the holiday season. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just giving it charity because it's Christmas. Whatever. Getting your token, helping those less fortunate over with for the year, eh? As opposed to never helping the poor at all? Hello? <laughs> What's wrong? With, what's wrong with a little charity, even if it's token charity? I mean, this is getting into the what drives altruism debates I've heard about, where people are like, does altruism really exist? Because people may be benevolent to others in order to feel better about themselves. 
bottom line, they were benevolent towards others. They gave to those less fortunate. They supported the poor. Or in the case of what I heard about in this morning's church service, some gift drive that they had made some poor kids who otherwise couldn't, you know, wouldn't have any presents this morning. Their eyes were like ginormous. From, wow, did I really just get this for Christmas? You know, and this is really what it boils down to with the whole Santa version of all of this is exactly what the folks who tried to rebrand it in those days wanted in the first place. Get away from the bickering over whose theology was right or not right, whether or not to even observe the thing or not, and turn Christmas into some kind of benevolent charitable holiday for helping those less fortunate. And, you know, being nice to your loved ones and things along those lines. Now, in today's day and age of Black Friday and Cyber Monday and all these attempts to try and create new super duper shopping days, I, I can't really say that we've remained faithful to this charitable everything's not always about me, 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 me kind of approach to Christmas. But it's good to see some of what this is supposed to be all about, whether you observe Christmas tide or you want to be charitable around this time of year. I mean, by all means, have at it. Have some fun with that. You'll definitely feel good about it, even though, you know, you're, you know by helping someone less fortunate. You know, it's definitely the sort of thing. It's definitely the sort of thing we need more of in this world. And I think that's what Dickens and the rest of them that tried to make Christmas into a Santa holiday of sorts, developing the Santa class into Santa Claus and all this other stuff. That's what they were going for. The selfish stuff came afterwards. This people punching each other in the stores to get a cheap TV came afterwards. This, this, you better get me everything I want and drown yourself in debt or I'm not speaking to you again came afterwards. And in the case of what's coming up with me, at me personally, I'm very happy that to announce that the tradition in among my step relatives who have been the most prone to getting caught up in this stuff of having their presence day on, well, Boxing Day or day after Christmas or something like that is now a 10 plus year old observance. Tomorrow is probably going to be really nasty because they're planning on having this stuff at five o'clock in the evening instead of around lunchtime. <laughs> I don't see that working out. Dad doesn't see that working out, but it should make for some interesting podcasts either tomorrow night or Tuesday morning. Regardless, though, I'm going to tag along because watching this disaster unfold is probably going to be quite entertaining at the very least. But hey, you know, at least Christmas tide can be left to itself and I don't have to worry about mixing these two celebrations together thanks to this little presence day thing that the that the step relatives cooked up a little over 10 years ago so good stuff good stuff and good stuff and they can keep christmas in their way and i can keep it in mine but uh, unlike mr scrooge nobody can say that i don't keep it i didn't get any christmas presents this year from anybody and you know what i'm not going to hold that against anybody i would rather have the relaxing gospel driven christmas tide over what passes for the santa christmas nowadays it was a nice idea to be all charitable but what people have done with it <laughs> bah, humbug. Speaking of humbug, let the humbug continue as the balance of this podcast will be E Jammy Jams, E's Jammy Jams, excuse me. Joy to the World, jazz version, roughly about three minutes or so, or just under three minutes. So, again, on December the 25th, coming at you, this is J, aka Multimedia J, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Have a safe and happy holiday season. This is Multimedia J Radio Style. Don't touch that dial. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by. And now, joy to the world! Joy to the world!